Hello, my name is Adam. I am an instructor of the Weta Sōkō Ryu tradition of Japanese tea ceremony here in Melbourne. Uh, we teach uh, every week on Saturdays at Hawthorne, uh, and that's the samurai school of tea. So Weta Sōkō Ryu is the samurai tradition of tea, uh, and uh, we have great pleasure in teaching people uh, the tradition of samurai tea and spreading the samurai tea culture in Melbourne. We're going to show you um, an example of the Bude style. This is a, a Bude table, um, a table for doing the tea ceremony. We're going to show you the style. Um, and um, after we set the first bowl at the table here, we're going to take you um, and show you some slides um, of the presentation to explain a bit about um, what we do. And also show you um, the angle from Hyonge Mono, which is a, a manga and now an anime about uh, the samurai tradition of Bude tea. Uh, and also features um, the founder of our school, Gwede Sorgo, in this uh, manga, which is pretty exciting for us. Um, the two very uh, important elements of samurai tea is uh, tranquility, number one, and creativity. The tea ceremony is a place to explore uh, tranquility and creativity, and I want you to, to appreciate both those elements today. So you can see they're very contrasting, or potentially you know, uh, elements that are contradict each other. And that's very much the case, and it makes it very interesting for me to try and balance those elements. So uh, today, um, after I serve uh, sweets first, then we will start the ceremony, and I'll conduct it in silence up until the first bowl is made. So the objective of that is just to let you sink down into the tranquility of the room, try and listen to the hissing of the kettle, appreciate the flowers and the clicker, <coughs> and the art that's on display, and just really sink down and have a look at your, your true self and try and get a glimpse of what really it is that you're all about um, in, in here. That's um, philosophical read number two, uh, number one. Um, then after we serve the first bowl, um, I'll start the presentation, I'll start the commentary and um, give you some information that hopefully you find interesting. And after we finish, um, you're very welcome to come up and have a look at the art that's on display that we use. Ask me heaps of questions. I love the questions. I love talking to people at these events, so please feel free to come around after, afterwards and um, ask any questions you have during the demonstration. Um, we'll start serving uh, sweets now. We have sweets. This will be our second guest. And we'll start in order of our horror from Ned's forward. Um, and we'll serve the sweets first up through here and through there. Um, and the sweets that we have today uh, two types. First is a green one, which is in the uh, image of a pine. Um, you feel free to have this one straight away. Then the second sweep is a little bunny rabbit, which happens to be the Chinese horoscope um, this year. That one's designed to actually have it together with the tea. So when you get to a bottle of tea later on, um, you can put that rabbit in your mouth, crush it, and then um, have your tea um, when the sugar is dissolving in your mouth. And that is a very uh, flavorsome experience, so feel free to hold on to that little rabbit to put your bowl of tea cups. <coughs> the interesting sachet thing um, is legal. It's green tea, um, but it's got sugar in it. So when you get home, hopefully you appreciate um, what you did today. Hopefully you like it, and hopefully you want to have some of this stuff again. This is a take-home pack, so that you can put it in a cup when you get home. Mix boiling water with it, um, and you'll have a sweetened uh, version of the tea that you see in today. Um, so it's just a little present from us uh, to you. Um, and after, um, feel free to have your green and sweet milk, the sweet milk before you have the tea. After everyone has settled down, then we'll start uh, the ceremony. I'll just uh, break the silence by commenting some little um, bits of knowledge about uh, samurai schools of tea while everyone's getting their sweets. Um, if anyone's experienced the Japanese tea ceremony before, you may have seen people wearing this purifying cloth. Uh, we wear ours on the right side, which might seem very insignificant, but it's a significant thing in that um, the reason behind us wearing the cloth on this side rather than the left side, which the majority of the schools do, is that coming from the samurai class, uh, we need to wear our swords on the left side. So um, in the 1600s, it was still a time of war, 
even when you're performing a T-Sermy, you can pull it out to fight, you can become an attack, um, and you need to be able to put your sword on straight away, and that split second that, that means you're taking off your purifying cloth and putting your sword on, it split second you die. So that's why we put our cloth on the right side. It seems a bit of a whimsical thing, whether to put it on the left or right, there's a lot of thought in behind where our cloth goes. Okay, everyone's uh, pretty much got their sweets now, so without further ado, uh, we'll commence the ceremony. Uh, I'll just stay over here silent and I'll continue the commentary uh, after the first bowl was served.
leave you hanging, so I'll at least teach you how to, how to drink the, the tea. When you accept the, the bowl, the, the front part of the bowl is facing towards you, so as a, res- a sign of respect back to the, the host, you turn it once towards yourself, so the front, that's it, the front part of the bowl goes up to the side. You change your hand position like so, so your left hand's underneath the bottom, your right hand thumbed towards the front, other fingers towards the back, and then have one more. So Robbie just said, how is the tea? No matter how the tea is, you always say, Taihen kekko de gozaimasu. Or, it's very nice, thank you. And after that, you just continue uh, to drink your leisure. So that your directions are between these two. Um, everyone else, um, there's no direction there. to have uh, any words. Uh, Now, I want to give you um, 
some information on the aesthetics and what we actually do in the teaser aid via Shulgem or not. You can see my uh, very poor attempt at highlighting uh, Shulgem or not or the um, art of Shulgem or not down there in the, the purple smoothly circles. Um, is the example of Shulgem or being a charm that are perfectly there. Uh, developed the style of the, the team bolt charm that are only there developed. Uh, sure again, or not, uh, to explain that, I need first to explain the aesthetics that it's in contrast to. The aesthetics of China is the aesthetics of flamboyance, of perfection, uh, of luxury, and around about 1500s in Japan, something very, very unique happened, and that's uh, them developing the aesthetics of, well, I can roughly encapsulate into the term of Wabi. Wabi is being happy with imperfection, being happy with uh, mundane, being happy uh, with things that are a little bit uh, unstated, that aren't 100% perfect, that aren't it's a beautiful, uh, perfect shape. An example of something that might be termed as a wabi uh, piece is, is here. That's what you can see there um, in the caricature, that's the actual tea bowl. This is a, a classic example of pure gamble. A pure gamble um, encapsulates aesthetic of Wabi, and on top of that it also goes a bit further and does things that are almost a little bit comical uh, and a little bit amusing, so it's a very interesting shape, um, it was said to be turned a Hyorge model, which is a little bit amusing, funny, um, but still unstated and still having that essence of the true nature of things, so things aren't 100% perfect in our world, things are imperfect and using things that reflect this imperfection uh, leads us to live a life of fulfillment rather than uh, not being satisfied with things, that things that are perfect might lead us to think. Now, what you're seeing today is a very, very small part of the Japanese tea ceremony. Uh, the full gig takes about four hours and it's called a chaji. And through the uh, Hyogen model, the manga, I'm going to show you the procedure of a chaji. Very streamlined, there's all sorts of different things, but just to give you the basic sense of what we do, what we practice for each week, uh, is to, to do a, a chaji. Um, we have practice every Saturday, and that goes for many hours, and what we're doing is all different elements that helps us to conduct this four hour tea ceremony called a chaji. This is Fred Zorribek, he's approaching the tea ceremony room, he's being invited by Samuel with you, um, and when you first arrive um, at a chaji, you approach Tea ceremony house for our garden. You find yourself at a waiting shelter called Machia, and when you're at this waiting shelter, you just take time to appreciate the garden, take time to appreciate the tranquility, the nature around you, the time of year it is, the seasons, and you chuck away all your desires and all your worldly thoughts. Uh, passing through the tea ceremony garden, um, it's, uh, the main purpose of it is just to throw away everything that's on your mind and enter the room on a blank sheet of paper. The host comes and greets the guest. This is Sin or Nikyu, the most famous dude in the history of the tea there with the black cat. And for the body bear, this is a uh, one on one uh, change between Nikyu and body bear and Kyogen Mono. Bear's then doing a very formal samurai uh, greeting. So you can see the front of the body bear still has his sword on the left there. When you walk through the garden, you uh, purify yourself halfway through at a tsuba. This is a, uh, a little tiny rock there that's been hollowed out with water, and you purify your hands and mouth before you enter the room. When you enter the room, uh, often you'll enter through this little tiny entrance here. And this entrance is called a nijiri wichi. Nijiri is the tokoli, so it's a tokoli entrance. The, the purpose of this is uh, Senor Riku wasn't um, a samurai, he was from the merchant class. Uh, he wanted people to enter the tea ceremony all as one, as no distinct ranks, because there was such a hierarchy in the society at that time. We don't necessarily keep that alive in the samurai schools, uh, but Senor Riku certainly wanted to um, show that everyone was on the same, uh, same level. Um, he was very quite Buddhist. Um, and the idea of this is that they get the sense that they're entering another world and also they have to take their swords off. So here's uh, Fred the Bear taking his sword off from the Katana Kake just outside the, the tea ceremony room. 
And when you enter the Trinitarian, it's like another universe. It's often termed Vesica. Vesica is like a separate universe. When you enter the Trinitarian room, uh, it's very soft, very minimal. Uh, it's often quite dark. Um, and it's like entering a whole other world separate from the other world that you know. And it's world expression, creative expression, according to whatever the host decides is right for that particular occasion of the season. That's a glimpse of uh, the room. You can see on this occasion that Simon Hickey has just chosen to have calligraphy in the Oppo rather than the Pinky and Flower. The first part of the Chaji is Kaisiki. Kaisiki is uh, a meal that you have. It's a light meal, it's not a very big meal. Uh, Kaisiki itself, this is the Kai. So see this part of my kimono here. Well, this is the Kai too. So this belly part of the kimono is the Kai. And the Seki is literally the rock. Okay, so uh, what Kaiseki means is the hot rock that you put in your stomach, uh, in the pouch, in your stomach here at the kimono, when you do long periods of meditation. What this does uh, in the winter, it keeps you warm, your stomach warm, and lets you get that the hunger that might let your mind wander um, when you're doing meditation. So, in that sense, the meal of the tea serving is a very light meal that just sustains you just enough to keep on enjoying what you're doing, and just enough to enjoy the main event, which is the tea to come later. After the meal, you go out to the garden, and the, uh, the host redecorates the room according to what he wants to evoke, in the sense of the seasonal and different artistic expression. Then you get called back into the room by a gong, and the main event starts. The main event is koicha. Uh, koicha is sick tea. What you had today was thin tea, was chat. Thick tea is about ten times thicker than what you have today. It's like a, a, a paste, kneaded up. Uh, it's the highest grade tea, so even higher than the grade that we have today. Um, and it's very mellow, fresh, absolutely beautiful taste. Um, I love it more than anything else in the world. If I could live off it, I wish I could. Um, but it's very nice. And in the past, in Japan, they used to exchange uh, this type of tea for land uh, as, as valuable as gold, just to give you a sense of how um, much a, a precious and uh, treasured time it was to be able to drink uh, tea and drink koichi. After koichi is... After koichi you have rusucha, which is the part um, that you had today, just that last bit of the tea ceremony, which is the, the thin tea. And of course, all these different uh, times during the chaji allow the host to express other things artistically and to decorate the room in a different way. This is what I've been talking about, enjoying art. Um, and this is a, a photo that shows you the reaction of the body there to this particular piece of the bar, which is a uh, korei jan, or a Korean uh, tea bowl. And this is showing the intense atmosphere that is also created off in the tea room, especially in the world of samurai tea. Um, you can see the sweat dripping off our only bears brow. Uh, while the bearing ha happens in the Japanese tea ceremony, um, this is an example of those formal interactions. And uh, I wanted, I did it last time, um, and people found it interesting, so I'll do it once again, um, to show you the distinction of the samurai schools of tea and merchant uh, schools. You've probably seen a lot of um, drama, people bow like this. That bow is something we don't do uh, in samurai schools of tea, we bow like this. You can see that when I bow like this, I can still see you all. Okay? That's uh, on purpose because you keep your peripheral vision when you do this. If you bow like this, you cut off your vision to the other parts of the room and to other people. And the other people you don't trust because you're a samurai, and they could be the people who finish you off. So when you're a samurai doing the tea, you still maintain the critical vision of the bow, the bow like this, rather than this. <coughs> okay, that's uh, the end of the, the charging there. That's the end of what I have to say uh, by manga. Um, there was uh, quite a bit of interest last time, which was uh, very nice. So we have the art that we're using today. I tried to evoke a sense of pure game model. So you would have seen that we used the black body bear T-ball, the one I showed in the photo. 
um, to give that, that sense of pure gamma, an example of pure gamma. The other chalang, the T bowl for the second I guess was the Hagi and Oni Hagi. Oni Hagi is like literally the devil's Hagi, uh, that big like, devilish blaze that it had on it. That's another example of pure gamma. So we'll bring those out and show those closely. You can also have a look at the, the powder tea that you have um, in the caddy over there. And I'll be at the front. I love questions, I love talking to people, so feel free to come up and approach me and ask me different things and hang around um, until the time comes we have to kick out. So I hope you uh, enjoyed the tea story. I hope it gave you something uh, different here at Manifest. It's been a great opportunity for us to come and express our art and our love for our art at a different uh, setting. So uh, thank you for showing interest in making it possible. Much appreciated. Three guys to come up and have a look. We'll bring out the tea balls. Oh, sorry, uh, the, the thin tea is uscha. Uscha. Yeah, and the thick tea is koicha. Koicha. Yeah, so koi is thick, usu is thin. So it's back in the, like, Edo period, that, that, that sort of, like, you feel like a balance. Yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. So what are, what are the ingredients? That's just tea leaves. Just yeah. tea leaves. Just green, yeah, green tea. Tea leaves crushed. Crushed yeah. just into a powder. Yep. Just what, what, so um, would they add anything else? Or? No. And is it brewed in there for a certain time? No, it's just boiling water in here. Oh, okay. We just take boiling water and mix it straight with that powder and whisk it up. And then it. Uh, the samurai women used to have lots of very long kimono and everything from the foot movements um, to the way they have to move on the tatami is dictated by what they used to wear. Um, and also the, the graceful nature of being a woman back in those days uh, had to be evoked through the ceremony, so there are different movements depending on whether you're a male or a woman. Taihen kekko de gozaimasu. Got on the rubber behind of it. Yeah, yeah Taihen, tai like very, very, very. Yeah. Kekko, like, yeah, very nice. I remember Taihen. De, de gozaimasu is the arcade form of des. So now okay. we just say something, something des, something, something des. In the past, we say de gozaimasu. Okay. Okay. Thank you.